Hey guys, welcome to my new series called Custom Semantic Segmentation. In this series, we're primarily going to be going over how to collect and annotate your own uh, image data set. And then we'll be training semantic segmentation models to predict these uh, masks that will go over the image. Um, specifically, we're going to be doing this for a data set that I created. So if you want, you could just use this data set. It's 200 images collected with their annotations um, that I've already created. But if you want to use your own data set, I'll be going over uh, how to create those annotations for your images. All right. But in order to make this accessible for the, the largest amount of people, I'm going to include this 8.5 by 11 printout if you want to follow along. Um, this is it. It's just a bunch of shapes on a piece of paper. Try to keep it simple. All right. Um, and something I'm doing differently here is I've decided to kind of like open source everything and release all of the code. Like I just want to give you guys all the code that I've ever written for this and put it all in one place so that it can be a really good resource on semantic segmentation. So even if you don't want to create your own mask and stuff and you just want to learn a specific thing about semantic segmentation, um, that's what these videos should support. So I mean, I don't expect everyone to watch all the videos, but pick around and see what interests you. Um, and I guess, yeah, the repository is called Semantic Shape. So if you want to follow along with the code, definitely check this out. And let me go into a couple of slides here. So in the bottom left here, you can see an example like of this GIF of what kind of results you can expect. Um, this specific model is called UNET. So there's two models supported. It's FCN8 and UNET. Um, they were released in 2014, 2015, if I'm correct. And these were kind of the fundamental models for a lot of semantic segmentation. So even though at this point they are outdated and lots of other models have surpassed them, I think it's very important. I mean, this is meant for people who are beginners who've never done this stuff. Um, maybe people are intermediate to kind of get a good grasp on how these models work conceptually, because once you kind of move into the more advanced models, you need to be able to kind of have the theory to support and understand what's going on. So we'll be covering that too. Another cool thing about this repository is it does um, support an image tab in TensorBoard. So you can see that here. And these are, uh, so, so as the model trains, you'll be able to view predictions or the mass predictions as it improves. So this is probably one of the coolest things. I mean, for classification models, like realistically, you could only look at uh, a confusion matrix and watch how it improves. With semantic segmentation, you're actually able to see the masks and how they improve as training goes on. So you can you can troubleshoot your model and see if it's working um, without having to like stop the training and then test it every single time, which is cool. Um, overview, this is basically everything I've already been talking about. Um, I'm gonna go, let's just hop to the video list. So there's gonna be 13 videos in total um, this is going to be the first one. Uh, I developed everything on Ubuntu 1804. So everything works on that. I have not tested it on Windows 10 yet, but I will do that next. If that doesn't work, then I will not be uploading this video. So uh, hopefully I should be able to get everything to work. Um, and yeah, so everything in green is what I consider the walkthrough. This is the bare minimum of kind of steps that you should follow if you're going to be collecting your own images, annotating them, and getting them training. If you're someone who's a beginner and you're new to, you know, creating image masks, you don't understand color channels, um, and a lot of these topics in orange are new to you and you don't know how to do that in OpenCV, those videos are primarily just walking through Jupyter Notebooks and showing you guys how to do a lot of that stuff. So. If you're new to this and you want to learn a lot about image masking and pre-processing all the data and just general OpenCV programming, that's what these videos are here for, okay? And I think these first three, there's a lot of like me typing and you should follow along. I mean, I'm going to give you the notebooks anyway, but I really recommend you're going to learn the most when you follow along and type with me. So I recommend that. And then... Uh, data augmentation and conditional random fields are more of like me just talking through code because there's quite a lot. Um, data augmentation is primarily so because we're working with 
like only 200 images in this case. It's really important that we augment our data um, such that we can get good performance on unseen orientations that we kind of didn't account for in our data collection. And we'll also be going over something called conditional random fields. Um, so this is like a post-processing step that you can use on the output of the neural network to typically improve the segmentation mask by like one or two percent. Um, and this is done on the CPU. There are some implementations where you can add a layer in a model and it's like a, it's implemented as like a recurrent neural network. I don't have the time to get into this right now. Um, and it seemed like it was kind of difficult when I looked at it. So if you were looking for a GPU based deployment of CRFs, sorry, this is, this is CPU based, but it does, it does work quite nicely. Um, then there's two theory videos, which basically I'm going to be doing is going through these couple slides and I'll just be talking about the theory of FCN8 and UNET so that everyone's on the same page. Um, and then the last two videos are again the walkthrough. So training the model and then streaming the results. All right. And uh, just to go through some requirements here, you're going to need a webcam. You need an NVIDIA GPU that has a compute capability of 3.5 or higher. Um, because this is computer vision, you're going to need a decent amount of memory. Maybe you can like maybe get away with two gigabytes, but I don't think you'll be able to. Um, probably something like four gigabytes at least is going to be necessary. I use the GTX 1070, which has eight gigabytes. Um, but the nice thing about semantic segmentation is you can train with a very small batch size. Um, so maybe you can get away with a really small memory. And if you, you kind of cut down on the number of parameters in the model, uh, that would be good. Um, so the other thing, something I'm not going to be covering, I will not be covering how to install TensorFlow GPU. So for that, you need an NVIDIA driver, you need CUDA 10, and the kind of supporting CUDNN libraries, which are the binaries, to get all of this working. There are a lot of guides out there on how to do this. Um, and I, frankly, I would just be wasting my time if I covered it. So I would make sure that you get that running. Um, there will be a point in the series where you kind of have to go do that. But um, if you already have that stuff set up, that's good. And I did release this for TensorFlow 113. Currently, TensorFlow 2.0 Alpha is out, but I haven't really touched it yet because it's in Alpha. I'm going to wait for it to become stable. Um, but this should pretty much hold up. I mean, a lot of the stuff that's being done in 113, it's going to be small tweaks to get it to work in 2.0, So I hope. Um, so that's kind of where, and there'll be requirements.txt. You'll be able to install all this stuff. Um, and another thing, so on TensorFlow GPU, I didn't really mention it in the next few videos, but this is how you would test it. And this is on their, their docs. So make sure that this stuff can run. And if it does, then you've got TensorFlow GPU set up, um, and you're good to go. So yeah, um, in the next video. We're going to be going over the install for Ubuntu or Windows. I recommend you use Ubuntu, but if you're someone who wants to use Windows, um, I think the only tricky part is installing the CRF stuff. But um, if I'm not able to get it working, then I won't even be uploading this video. So um, I'll see you guys in the next video where we go over installation on your system.